going. The end of this thing is eternal life, and it's not that far away, and don't get distracted. Because, listen, you say, how can somebody fall away from the living God? The same way somebody can fall away from that door without actually going through it. You can walk over to that door, not actually go through it, and then fall away from it. That's, that's how it happens. Yes, you could, you could liken it to going through the door is genuine salvation. But you know what? My eye cannot discern, and your eye cannot discern whether people are on this side of the door or that side of the door. But what our eye does discern is we watch people wait, fall away from Wait a that. second. Okay. It, he says, my, your eye can't discern who's on what side of the door. He's saying that you could walk up to the door and then fall away before you go through the door. So who are the people that are on the other side of the door? You're putting yourself on the wrong side of the door, are you not? That door. Now it may prove whether they were God's house or not. You're God's house if you hold fast your confidence to the end. But we haven't reached the end. Well then, who's on the other side of the door if we haven't reached the end yet? Yeah. You better beware of presumption and pride. Because that would be the first way you'll fall on your face. Brethren, our confidence, our confidence is in our God. That is where we need to be. Our confidence. Brethren, don't grow weary of prayer. That's one of the hardest things. Uh, all right, don't go. Okay. All right. Whatever. Uh, so, the uh, Tim Conway. The, this is interesting. Uh, the Tim Conway I know, and the the Tim Conway I love, it's this guy right here. I'm not sure if uh, you know. Most of you are old enough to remember this fella. He's silly. There's no two ways about it the guy is just straight silly well you could say this guy is pretty silly too right so let's read the description here it says you may have started the Christian race incredibly well but Jesus teaches that you must endure to the end to be saved all right well is that true must endure Jesus teaches that you must endure to the end it's not there well why are these guys lying I, I'm not sure I, I'd have to do a big study to figure that out wouldn't I because I, and I don't even care because he doesn't teach that so I'm not gonna try to figure out every single error that these guys have. You got three mentions, three basic mentions of enduring to the end in Matthew 10, Matthew 24, and Mark 13. And you know, Matthew 24, Mark 13 are parallel chapters. Okay, and so Mark 4 would be uh, representative of what he's trying to teach, but he obviously doesn't understand it, right? So in Mark 4, it talks about how, how they don't have any root in themselves, so endure, but for a time. Afterward, when affliction and persecution arises, for the world's sake, immediately they are offended. All right, so um, in other words, uh, they don't fully trust the Lord Jesus Christ they they hear the gospel and um, they pretend to be converted but then fall right back into the world because they don't have any root in them which basically means they don't they don't believe they, they were given all the information they received it and then they rejected it for the world's sake instead of um, 
for the word's sake, right? So, Matthew 10, Matthew 24, Mark 13. This is what he's talking about. This is what Tim Conway is talking about. Oops, wrong Tim Conway. That's what this Tim, Tim Conway, I mean, it might as well be this Tim Conway. This is what he's teaching. That Jesus, he's saying that Jesus teaches that we must endure to the end. And so, you don't even have to believe in Jesus. You just have to endure to the end. Or you have to believe and endure. Well, let's use that standard that this liar is setting for everybody. He, he's not setting them for, for himself. He's putting this on everybody else. And, and let's find out exactly how big of a lie this liar is. All right? This big lie. Boy, it just boils my blood. I'm not kidding you. All right, first of all, I got to settle down here. So, you got to endure to the end. Well, that's not what it says in Matthew 10. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. It does, it does not say you must endure to be saved. It says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. All right, this is very clearly talking about people being saved all the way up until the end because the context is the world is going to get tough it's going to get rough it's going to get hard and we can take confidence knowing that men will still be women people will still be getting saved all the way until the end so uh, keep preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Keep going in your faith in Jesus Christ and help others when you can to also believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is, It's going to get rough, it's going to get tough, but, but if we keep going, keep per persevering, we might save, we might help save a few lost souls all the way until the end time. So, Matthew 24, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So, all these things that Jesus is talking about in regards to the end time, because that's what he's asked in Matthew 24, Mark 13, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus spells that all out. He, gives, he lists all that out, right? So, we're going to have to endure all these hardships if you will all these tough guns right but people will still be getting saved all the way to the end all right same thing with Matthew or Mark 13 and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved nowhere in those three mentions is it talking about you must endure otherwise you're not going to be saved I mean you were saved and then not saved and then um, what do you do after you're saved and then unsaved how do you get saved again I mean if Jesus couldn't do it who's going to save you right, it's, I mean it's absolute utter nonsense all right? and um, I think it would be important to mention John 6 labor not for the meat which perishes but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him has God the Father sealed. Alright, so if you are saved, you are sealed. Right, now keep that in mind. Alright. And so let's go, let's go let's start here, because I want to show how big of a lie this lie is. Let's go, first of all, um, do a word search for watch hour. Okay. Matthew 24, watch Therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord 
does come. Watch, therefore, Matthew 25, watch, therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. Matthew 26, and he comes unto the disciples and finds them asleep and saith unto Peter, what? Could ye not watch with me one hour? All right, so think about this. Let's go to that chapter. All right. So if you're familiar with the Bible, you know that the disciples of Jesus were keeping watch because there were they were coming after Jesus. And so... Jesus commanded them to watch and uh, he commanded the, the disciples to watch and as soon as Jesus uh, went away to pray they fell asleep and Jesus comes back and he says what you couldn't you just watch with me one hour and he says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time. He's upset. He's disappointed with the disciples, right? And he goes away again. And he prays again. And he comes back and he finds them asleep again. And then he goes away a third time. And he prayed again. And then he comes back. And he says, sleep on now, take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Okay, so this is right before Judas comes. The He's the one that was going to betray him. He's the one that did betray him. And... So, think about this here. Jesus commanded them to watch the disciples, to watch while he goes and prays. And they fell asleep on him. So, they fell away from the door. Does that mean they lost their salvation? Does that mean they all lost their salvation because they couldn't stay awake they couldn't stay awake for one hour because they couldn't stay awake for one hour they lost their salvation that's what this clown is teaching right not that clown so well hold on a say that's not enough to convince you you remember you remember this verse here? Let's go down a little bit. Where is this at? Let's go down just a little bit here and let's just see. Let's start here at 69. Now Peter sat without in the palace and a damsel came unto him saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But Peter denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And another maid saw him and said, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, Peter, with an oath, he swore, I do not know the man. And after a while, there was another. And Peter began to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. Think about that. So Peter is, he's adamant that he does not know Jesus Christ. You think he all he lost his salvation right there? 
Is that what you're teaching? Peter was not saved, but you're saved. You're better than Peter. Is that what you're teaching? Sounds like it, doesn't it? So think about that. And then Peter remembered the words of Jesus, and he went out and wept bitterly. There was, see, there was consequence to what he'd done, wasn't there? He wept bitterly. Felt tremendous sorrow because he knew he screwed up. I mean, without the grace of God, what are we? We got no chance. These guys here, they are grace haters. They absolutely despise the grace of God. There is no mercy. There is no grace. You must endure to the end. All right, now hold, hold on a second, because it gets worse than this. All right, so let's, uh, I think we have to go to the next chapter. Let's see if I can do this here. Oh, I'm going to show you somebody else that apparently wasn't saved. Because they obviously lost faith in God. You lose faith in God, you walked, you fell from the door. You weren't saved. I still don't understand who could be saved. Why can't you be saved and go through the door? You see there are people on the other side of the door. You say you can't tell who's on what side of the door. But you're assuming there's people on the other side of the door and you can't get there. By your own standard, you can't get there. But you acknowledge that there are people on the other side of the door that are saved. All right. So, where am I at here? Now it's got to be right about here. Alright, they're mocking Jesus. He's on the cross. The thieves also. He, you know, and the thief, one of the thieves, he was saved. What did he do? Well, he got lucky because he died right away, right? So he didn't have a chance to sin. No, that's not it at all. That's ridiculous. He was saved by grace. All right, so here in verse 46, and it was about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachalothi, I can't say it. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He's denying God. He's accusing God of forsaking me. You know, you, we go back to... Where is that at here? I'll, I will never leave nor forsake. Oops. Think about that. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I have to change the words to find the Old Testament equivalent. But I will never leave thee nor forsake me. And here is Jesus in the flesh dying the moment before he he's about to die he says my God my God why has thou forsaken me he fell away right before he died so he's not saved not even Jesus Christ is saved because he fell away from the door so we can't trust in Jesus Christ. We got to put our trust in Tim Conway. Because he knows the secrets that nobody knows. Is that what you believe? <laughs> really? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why was Jesus saying that? It's because he was about to die. If you're about to die... You might say the same thing. It's natural. Jesus said that in the flesh. He didn't say that in the spirit. And he told them he was thirsty. And so they filled a sponge with vinegar. Surely you know what vinegar is. 
They put it on a reef and gave him the drink. And you can imagine if you're thirsty, if somebody puts vinegar to your mouth. Uh, you're probably going to lose it. And uh, Jesus lost it. He yielded up the ghost. He died right there. Right Now, according to this clown, not this clown, this clown, you must endure to the end. Jesus couldn't, he was almost there, man. He, doggone it, just about had it. And then he, Lost faith in God at the very last moment. Because he was dying. Because he was a moment away from dying. He lost it. He fell back away from the door. He never quite made it. But good old Tim Conway, man, he's going to save us. That is one of the hardest things to battle through. See that with your eyes, which they saw, which cannot be seen. See the realities. We have a God in heaven, a God who is the Father of lights and who rejoices in giving to us. We have us a Savior who spent his blood to redeem us. You can't see justification. I can't see it. You can't see that blood. But you know what? We live on promises. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. Don't walk away from the door. Go through it all the way. Go through it. How do you know if you're in or out? Well, I'll tell you this. It's going to be persevering. It's going to not be falling away. It's not going to be giving yourself to... All right, so Peter denied Jesus three times. And Jesus himself said, Why, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So that wasn't good enough. So what's good enough? To some kind of drift that takes you off or some kind of error that takes you away taking your an error can take you away from the promise of God your eyes off of Christ taking your eyes off of Christ just like Peter right I mean he not only denied Jesus he was cursing using foul language and swearing this excerpt is taken from the full sermon, Keep Going, by Tim Conway. Well, yeah, I'll be honest with you. Hey, so you can trust Tim Conway. You can't trust Jesus because he just didn't make it to the end. You must, But Jesus teaches that you must endure to the end to be saved. And no, that's not in the Bible, so I can't trust the Bible. But Tim Conway, this clown, he says it, so it must be true, right? Uh, seriously, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus didn't make it to the door, according to Tim Conway. You gonna believe this guy? I mean, how are you gonna be saved? He's saying that the blood of Jesus was not enough to save you, that you have to endure. No, no, no. You must endure to the end to be saved. If you don't endure all the way to the end, it's not close to the end, it's all the way to the end. And if, did Jesus endure all the way to his death? My God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? According to this guy's standard, Jesus didn't make it. The disciples of Jesus Christ didn't make it. So they couldn't stay awake. For one hour, they couldn't stay awake. They couldn't make it all the way to the end. But Tim Conway boy oh boy he better hope he makes it all the way to the end huh it's hard to say what's gonna happen in the future you really don't know from one day to the next what's gonna happen you really don't know 
And how can you have confidence in Jesus Christ if you're not sure that you're going to be saved? What happens if you're in an accident and you suffer severe brain damage? And your mind goes back to that time before you were saved. When you were st still in your sins. What happens then? You permanently unsaved? So Jesus never really saved you, did he? And if at any moment you could lose your salvation, then he's never really saved you at all. Did he? But is that what the Bible teaches? Seriously. Let's oh, let's go. Uh, let's go. You know, let's make this easy, right? Let's make this easy. Now there are there's a lot of verses I'd like to share. You know we're. Where sin abounds, grace abounds more. Now, if you want to argue, listen. You want to argue that it's wrong to sin? I'm with you all the way. It's never okay to sin. It's always wrong to sin. You should never sin. I completely agree with that. It's wrong to sin. It. It's like it's wrong to not deny the Lord Jesus Christ. And what happened when Peter realized he was denying the Lord Jesus Christ? He broke down and wept bitterly. Right? And so, also, um, uh, what's that? What is that? verse here. I can't spell that. For whom the Lord loveth, for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Think about if you had a son. And let's say that son disobeyed you. You're going to kick him out? You're going to stop loving him? It's your son. If he, if he doesn't go into the room and, and go through that door and clean his room, is you going to kick him out? Are you going to stop loving him? Are you not going to correct him when he makes a mistake? When he's going off and doing the wrong thing, you're not going to correct him? Is that what you're teaching? You're not saved. You're no longer my son because you didn't put the dishes away. Is that, is that what these guys are teaching? And maybe if these guys had children, they might understand us better, right? So where was I at? So that's not where that's not where I was going with that. So oh, I forgot what I was going to say here. Oh yeah, no, I remember. I apologize. Okay, so Ephesians 2, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. That not of yourselves. You're saved not by what you do, but by what was done for you. Right? Not of works. If it's not of works, and if it's not of yourselves, then how can you walk away? I, and it, listen, it doesn't even make sense to say that you could be saved and then lose your salvation. The very meaning of the word saved means you're saved. You can't be saved if you could go from saved to unsaved. <clears throat> right? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You can't have everlasting life and then lose it. If you, Otherwise, it was never ever la everlasting life. And Jesus says, He who drinks of the water that I shall give him
shall be in him. Oh. A well spring. Oh, wait a second. Oh, that. You know what? That's not the same. That's the same thing, but. I, and I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Jesus says, now this is Jesus, right? I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the Almighty. Jesus is Almighty God. So, um, let's go this way. This is the first John. No. Wow. Apparently, I don't know the Bible at all. What is that? Um, let's do it this way. There we go. Let's go all the way here. Whoso drinks, uh, whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him, in him, a well of water springing up into everlasting life all right so this water once it's in you how how are you going to get this water out of you if it's springing up into everlasting life ah, you know what tim i'm sorry buddy but once you're saved you're stuck and if you're teaching you can't be it, you can't be, um, if, if you're teaching you can lose your salvation, you're not saved at all. And this, so this has to be an example of somebody that is a false teacher. Somebody who is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Somebody who is a child of the devil. And he's coming after the children of God. He's coming after your children. Now you can lay the blame on Satan, but God's going to lay the blame on Tim Conway because he's the one doing it. All right, and you can explain to God how it's not you, it's Satan that's deceived you. But that's the choice that Tim Conway made. And this sermon that he's teaching is the choice that he has made. You can blame somebody else. But it falls on him just as it falls on you for what you teach and one more thing that I want to point out here let's see if I can figure out this so, uh, let's do it this way well I'm um, this is gonna be my last point right here Jesus says, you have not chosen me. Oh boy. Let's see if I can figure this one out. Let's see. Um, Behold my servant who I have chosen, my beloved, and whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. For many are called, but few are are chosen so think about that is God choosing you or are you choosing God and if you got to endure to the end it's your choice but if you are chosen of God you can relax you can have peace you can have comfort knowing that you are sealed and sanctified forever all right, and there's many examples of this for the elect's sake whom he has chosen again this is believers in Jesus Christ don't let deceivers deceive you right, okay let's go to uh, I have not I chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil mm -hmm. I know whom I have chosen. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit. Right? So, again, Jesus chooses us. Jesus is God Almighty. If Jesus doesn't choose you, you're in trouble. And once, But once he does choose you, you're on the right side of the door forever. You're stuck. 
Sorry about that, buddy, but you are stuck, Chuck. There's no way to get back from that door. Once you cross the line, buddy, that's it. Sorry, you're saved forever. Sucks to be you, huh? Saved forever. Can't squirm your way out of this one because Jesus has chosen you. Now you're stuck. Can't get out of his hands. All right, and then also in 1 Peter 2, verse 3, ye are a chosen generation. So you're not choosing God. God is choosing you. If you believe salvation is based on the choice that you make, burn, yeah, that's wrong, buddy. See, so if you're an unbeliever, you can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can pray, you can confess, you can do all that. You can beg God to come into your heart, to change your heart. It doesn't mean that God's going to do it. It's on, it's on God to choose you. And you're at His mercy. But it is the grace of God that you might be saved. And if you truly do believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you truly do call upon the name of the Lord, He's promised that He will have mercy on you and he will save your soul God knows your heart better than you know your heart so as an individual all you can do is trust in the Lord Jesus Christ put yourself in his hands you can't save yourself no matter what no matter what you're 100% at the mercy of God he's in control and not you and thank God for that because I mean really the reason why I came to the Lord Jesus Christ why I turned from my the life that I was living I knew there was something wrong with this world and I knew there was something wrong with my heart. It took a long time for me. I'm not as smart as most people, but it took a long time for me and I finally realized that Jesus is the Christ, that he's the only one that can save me. God knows I can't save myself. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna be able to do it on my own and it's not even going to be close. I'm 100% at the mercy of God. I've got no chance without God. So this idea that you have to endure to the end, if that were true, I, I got no chance, man. I can't do it. Yeah, I mean, come on. Since i become a believer, I'm changed. No question about it. I have the Spirit of God in me. There's no denying that. But... That's not because I'm changed. That's not going to save me. It's because God changed me. It's because of God that I'm saved. And thank God for that.